So delighted to be joined today by Stella Smith. Stella, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's not true, you're very good. You just told me you've got a bit of a summer cold. Well, I'm, saying, yeah. so. I'm doing much better now because I don't have that, you know, dritty <laughs> nose and the sound that I've had for most of the week. But no, today is good. And it's Friday and the sun's shining in London. This is all we want. So listen, kind of tell me, kind of what led to your passion around social impact and kind of creating, I suppose, equal opportunities in the world for well-being, benefits and space? Well, I, 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 you know, it's definitely a passion now. I, I hope I've mm. always been a, a nice person, which sounds very wishy-washy, but um, I, I think that I'm very good at, at making money. Um, so commercially, I'm, I've been astute. So my mum and dad always said I had the Midas touch. I, you know, I bought Banksy before he was famous and I have a, a, a kind of crazy fairy tale of a career from a working full time mm-hmm. McDonald's at 16 to you know, having some great job titles. But um, I, I think I've been driven really by the perks position because I think I've been, you know, I've suddenly found myself in a position where this year I, I think I can make doctors and counsellors available for sub a pound in some areas in South Africa that have no kind of healthcare whatsoever. So there's this, there's this, you know, I know I've got beautiful gross margins, like I've got an amazing SaaS type business, a huge scalable market, mm. huge market fit traction, all the things you want. But then every morning I get up and we get another example come through by email or a call or someone on social media saying, this kind of made my day better or this changed an outcome. And then it feels remiss not to do it. So, and obviously I sit on the Kennedy family's board as well, Bobby Kennedy's human rights. So they've given me a good uh, indoctrination into uh, what they explained is that human rights isn't just where I was in my head, which is, you know, there's been a, another terrible thing happen in the world. There's you know no sanitation after a earthquake or, and I've sent my check off each month. And what they explained is even if you're a white male in central London, you have human rights, you know, and yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of privacy and data and that it, and that it's for everyone. And so I, I don't know that I am passionate. I know that I get up in the morning and it definitely makes me feel nicer to have both parts of that character. Whereas historically, I think I was more commercial. So can, I, can I ask you a question? Just pick you up on one small thing, which, as you were saying, it was really interesting to me. You use the word perks, and, you, and actually, do we as a society, like, kind of, and then you separate perks and kind of to commerciality, and actually, to some extent, do we as a society, do we get it wrong? Because when we talk about kind of well-being and looking after each other, and, and then you, we refer to it as a perk, is it actually kind of, we got to relook at how, to how we operate and realise actually, it should be part the same way we get paid. We should have this expectation yeah. of whether it is basic rights or even what kind of enhanced rights or something like that. I mean, for me, I, I believe it should be a fundamental human right that everybody has access to basic healthcare services and a financial mm. education. But that is not the case across the globe currently uh, for the you know, for the majority rather than the minority. And I, I agree with you. I, I think that. I actually think that the younger generation now, or certainly what we see from Gen Z, is that there's an expectation in the hiring process um, of having those that kind of support from an employer, even where people are engaged in it in a different way. So I think there's there's definitely a movement, and I think COVID impacted that. Um, we suddenly realised, as you know, a, a body of human human people, that if we're not well, then we're not at all. And um, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's you know, speakers' corner, whether it's perks, or whether it's a, large organization or, or whoever if your people are not well um where are you you're 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 nowhere right mm. you need people and so and and does this have to be driven by business or is this driven by society um oh i think it needs to be driven by both i know it's it's like all the big questions in life i don't think there's one silver bullet <laughs> and quite often now i get interviewed on uh tv about the nhs and you know, inevitably the interviewer tries to push me down the line of the NHS is bad, which, you know, my mum had cancer, I wouldn't have my mum, I wouldn't have my daughter, you know, and it's an amazing resource. Um, but I think that sort of arguing over who and what, I think you can only make change in what you do as a human. I, you know, I don't think I can change the world, but I can change the immediate world around me. And if I do that and everyone does that, then we get there. So I, I think it needs a I think it needs a push from society, which means government, which means everybody and, and the like. But I think it also needs a push from co- the commercial. We know that 
businesses drive a lot of what happens on the world, right? And um, and therefore we need both elements of that to come together to be able to create change. But I think that change is already happening. I think it's already in play. Um, and I think there's a natural trajectory already that we will see, you know, we see it with businesses that are now socially doing something for social good alongside commercial mm -hmm. Play back 20 years ago, that may have been happening, but it certainly didn't have the publicity uh, that it has now. And do you think, kind of, I'm sorry, I'm dotting around, but no. this really yeah. with me. Like, well, you talked about kind of, you mentioned Gen Z and what they believe. Do you think, kind of, the generations above Gen Z, we've always had that in us and we've just been quiet, or do you think they've influenced us to be more socially aware of it? I would like to think that we've always had it in us. But I think that, you know, certainly, you know, I've got lots of wrinkles under this blonde fringe and having worked in you know, <laughs> quite senior job titles in corporate land, you know, yes. there was a way of doing things more. And I, I think that's been challenged. And I think to be able to do it more openly, to be able to have whole areas of large organisations focus on corporate social responsibility, on ESG, you know, to be more aware of the planet. We, we all know that. We can all see that, 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 that that's been happening. But when you have that focus and when you have that visibility, I think you get more out of it. Um, so when think people are quietly going about doing their business, you don't get the, you know, it's a bit like a startup in, in, in my world, is each individual person wants to do something, bring us together as a collective, all with a common mission and goal, then we end up, I think, getting, uh, we're definitely bigger than the sum of each of the individual parts, you know, and, 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 and I think that's important. And so you... How are you feeling currently right now? Probably less of asked up front. Are you optimistic about the journey we're going on or do you think kind of there's still a long way to go? I think I am always optimistic. I can't help myself. I was born optimistic and I think that's helpful for some and not so helpful for others. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic on the journey. I mean, I'm living in a fairy tale right now. Um, you know, my, mm. my, my company at the moment has gone from strength to strength and um, it's through the power of people that that's been happening. So I can see it changing. I think there's yeah. a lot. Of, it's like all of those big things. Um, but when you're part of the journey, that's when it's exciting. Sarah, on that on that optimistic note and bring a smile to my face and with a sun out. It's been lovely speaking. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Lovely to see you, Nick. Thanks for having me.